Right, I reckon if I take this roll pin out here, there'll be a little groove machined into this pin. Because um, this pin can't go all the way through, otherwise this wouldn't be able to rotate. So there's another one of these on the other side, on the other side, it's exactly the same. So I'll take that out and then take out this screw, again, same on the other side, and then this whole assembly will hopefully come away. Ah, there we go. So there's that groove that we were talking about. This is just a basic hydraulic system. So this yoke here pivots on this pin, which operates this hydraulic cylinder here. Okay, this is called a master cylinder. So the piston goes down into there when you pull the handle back, and when you let go of the handle, the spring pushes it back up. What that's doing is it's pushing some oil through the internal galleries in this, this casting, into the slave cylinder here and then that's going to push on the piston that's in the slave cylinder so you might have noticed that the master cylinder is a lot smaller than the slave cylinder so let's just take this over to the whiteboard and I'll show you why that is we've got a master cylinder and a slave cylinder a force being applied to the master cylinder which is going to generate an oil pressure the oil pressure is going to go through here and into here, so the oil pressure is going to be the same in both cylinders, and that's going to give us a force out. Now, master cylinder is small, slave cylinder is big. So the pressure of the oil is the force that we apply to it, divided by the area that the force is applied over. So we're going to put a force in, divide it by the area of the piston, that's going to give us a pressure. So let's say that we've got 10 forces divided by 10 areas. So metric would be newtons millimeter squared, imperial pounds square inches. Okay, but units don't matter for this. We're just working on, on getting a, a basic ratio. So that's going to give us a pressure of one. Okay, and the pressure in the master cylinder is the same as the pressure in the slave cylinder because they're connected like that okay so the force that comes out is going to be the pressure in the slave cylinder which we've already said is the same as the one in the master cylinder so that's going to be one times the area of the slave cylinder so I've said here that the slave cylinder just for the example is ten times bigger than the master cylinder. So the area of the slave cylinder is 100 square whatevers and the area of the master cylinder is 10 square whatevers, so that's 10 times bigger. So 1 times 100, our output force is 100 whatevers. So therefore our force out is 10 times our force in because our slave cylinder area is 10 times bigger than our master cylinder area. And that's just the basics of hydraulics. So I've just made an interesting little discovery. When I pumped this outside, the piston didn't move, but as you can clearly see now, this is going up and down when I operate the, the lever. And I've got a feeling what's happened is when I've been given this, and it was all second hand, all broken, person didn't want it, I think they've tried to repair it, and what they've done is the little chain and, and threaded rod that comes down from the, the, the lever, the, the, the handle, to operate this pressure relief valve here. It's all a bit rusted up and I think it's been set up so that it was a bit too tight and the pressure relief valve's been basically jammed open. So when you pump the, the, the handle it doesn't build any pressure in the cylinder. So if, hopefully if I just give this a few pumps now and put a bit of weight on here this will go down. Yep, that's going down nicely. It's a bit stiff, so it might need a little bit of a clean, but that's, yep, that's working nicely. And 
three, two, one. This roll pin here and one on the other the other side are well and truly stuck. So I'm reluctant to use heat to get them out because I don't want to melt these these plastic wheels. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to machine up a little special punch that's really short and exactly the right diameter just to, to knock them out the rest of the way. It's a bit of a pain, but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. There we go, let's see if that works a little bit better. It's a nice snug fit in the hole and it's a lot shorter so it shouldn't buckle. Right, I've been around with the, uh, the WD-40 or penetrating fluid, whatever you want to call it. And everything's now moving nice and freely. I can drive the mechanism back and forwards. It's all nice and free. Taking those roll pins out of the, the, the wheel supports just allowed me to knock the axles slightly to take any load out of the, the wheels and get in there with a bit of penetrating fluid and it's just freed it up nicely. So I'll get some new roll pins uh, put back in towards the end of the, the refurb and uh, that'll get that all nice. But next job is these little wheels. There's one missing down here. Uh, this one, uh, let's be honest, doesn't really inspire confidence. So let's make a couple of new wheels. Need to go down about another 10 millimeters. Okay, again, mm -hmm. yeah, again, again. The temptation to put my finger in there to see if this is lined up is almost overwhelming, but never put your finger where you wouldn't put your. This chain is done. I think basically it's been in the penetrating fluid for a couple of days I've worked it back and forwards I've beat on a few of the links and the pins and things like that and it, there's a couple of the links that are just not freeing up so I've had a little rummage through the box of bits and I found a bit of old nine speed bicycle chain now with chains when you want to join them to things you always got to use the uh, the link with the plates on the outside. So you see how this one's got the links on the uh, the plates on the outside. 
as is this one and the same with these two. Well, that means this bit of chain is going to be approximately one link too long. So to compensate for that, I'm going to have to shorten this little threaded rod by the length of one link. I better just pop the coffee press back in the kitchen before anyone notices. Let's see if we can solve the little uh, missing wheel problem. These to replace 50 to 60 pounds a wheel. These 30 pounds a pair. So simple, right? The only problem is that these have got um, a 20 millimeter ID bearing and this is a 25 millimeter shaft. So we're gonna have to put this in the lathe and turn these down so that the new wheels fit. So we've got a little groove at each end at the moment for circlip. We'll have to recreate that geometry on the smaller diameter as well. Right, got the, uh, got the axle set up in the collet chuck here, got the DTI on the top, and if we just give this a little spin, you can see the run out on the DTI, which is about four one hundredths of a millimeter, or what's that, uh, one and a half thousandths of an inch. So for this job, that's more than good enough. Guess we'll have to use plan B. This is the, uh, the handheld angle grinder tool post attachment. It comes strongly recommended against.
Right then, I'm guessing if you've made it this far, you probably enjoyed that. So uh, leave us a thumbs up, drop a comment down below if you fancy it. If you haven't already, then I highly recommend you smash that subscribe button. It's probably going to be the best decision you make today. Um, I've got a few plans. Oh, you can't see it. Oh well, it's just here, the pallet truck. I'm leaning on it. I've got some big plans for this. Um, there'll be a another video where I'm going to make something else and uh, this is definitely going to come into play. Again, you can't see it, can you? Oh well. Um, so anyway, yeah, like, share, subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.